Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. I have for you today the fifth in a series of videos on the topic the spiritual powers of omniscience and omnipresence and omnipotence on earth today. Things to look out for by Alice B. Claggett. This, the fifth in the series, is entitled The Lure of Rising Above Right and Wrong for those whose lives run sideways of the law. This short section is included because when I was meditating with the group of people that I later left, uh, whose practice um, centered around the psychic powers of omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence. I was surprised to find there were a number of people who had had run-ins with the law, who had track records with the law, and who actually frightened me. And that's the main reason I left the group, is that I found I was amongst some criminals, and I had never in my life been around anybody like that before. Um, I, I never saw anything bad happen there. But after I left, I, I sure got an earful on the, on the astral plane. Whether the astral plane spoke the truth or was just a reflection of, of exaggeration of soul wounding, I have no way of knowing. Uh, it was, for me, very concerning um, because I believe in the common good. I believe in abiding by the law, and I believe in, in ahimsa, in not harming anyone in my life if I'm able to live my life in that way. Uh, in the general sense, I'm very lucky to have had that opportunity, as I've always had enough to eat. Uh, I've always found employment, and, and I've always been able to associate with good, honest people. So I understand that there are quite a few people in the world who don't have those opportunities and who have no choices. But nevertheless, I myself would not condone uh, non-law abidingness, breaking the law. I would see, try to seek um, a sense of renewal and change instead. If I were a spiritual teacher amongst a group of criminals, I would not say, right and wrong make no difference. Go ahead and murder people for money. Go ahead and take people's money away from them. Go ahead and kill children. Go ahead and, and eat the followers who leave. Go ahead and, you know, whatever. I, it would never occur to me to say a thing like that. I would not feel vainglorious about omnipotence and so forth. I would, I would rely on my former training with my parents and who taught me Christian ways. You know, that's, how I would, that's how I would go about it. But not everyone in the world has the advantage of a Christian background or the background in any faith when they were growing up. Or they may have some, some deep soul wounding in early childhood that prevents them even from taking on human-like, humanoid values in their lifetime. They may instead be reptoid or insectoid in, in leaning, in understanding of, of morality. And these are topics I've discussed elsewhere. Now I'd like to make it clear that I'm not saying that, that the leader of the spiritual group that I spent some time with had done any of the extremely bad things that I'm talking about uh, just in this section or had advised any of that. But rather what happened was on the psychic plane, on the astral plane, it, which is admittedly exaggerated and emotional in value, these astral stories came up to that effect and they frightened me. In fact, they, they, they terrified me. Now, uh, with that aside, I will go back to the text, the very short text of this section, and it goes like this. In fact, antisocial personalities such as career criminals, sex workers, drug dealers, and even serial killers and cannibals might be drawn to the experience of the body of light simply because it raises their consciousness 
above the understanding that their acts are in defiance of societal expectations. Such an experience of neutral mind would likely soothe the weight of great soul wounding behind the life experience of the career criminal. So again, what I'm saying is that the notion of the spiritual value of neutral mind might be mistaken by the career criminal as a way to condone or approve of his uh, law-breaking past or her law-breaking past. I, I think this is a wrong understanding of neutral mind. Neutral mind is a way for me to, I feel, to look upon the um, the play of the realm of duality without being too upset over it, you know, um, because from a stance of a person with good, what they call good social values, there's just a great deal of pretty gnarly stuff going on. So through neutral mind, I can, I can rise above my concern uh, regarding all of the things that could be better in our world and abide in blissful, loving nature with God nevertheless. I would take it in not that sense and not in the sense that I have neutral mind and so therefore I can become a serial killer, I can, I can be a cannibal, I can uh, kill my parents and my ch children and uh, destroy all the old folks in, in the community for cash doled out and just at, at, atrocious, atrocious things, atrocity after atrocity, you know. That's not neutral mind, that's being a career criminal. And if a person were a career criminal, I feel that the better course of action would be to change the mode of behavior, to fly beneath the radar of the general public so as not to go back to jail. Don't you agree? Jail is downtime, is it not? I mean, how can you earn any money while you're in jail? You know? So all of the get-rich-quick schemes in the entire world don't mean too much if you're cooling your heels and spending most of your time in jail. Don't you agree? I, it's a very practical consideration to think of a way to get along with our friends and neighbors instead of fighting them and injuring them and always being on the wrong side of the road. That's what I feel. I hope that I've made myself completely clear because I know in the past I was too terrified by the experiences I had with that group on the astral plane to actually come forth and explain what was what. May you all be blessed with perfect peace and joy. I hope nobody took any offense at what I said. Um, and I hope you will be all be safe and happy in these troubled times. God bless you all.